All right, what's going on you guys? Welcome back to the channel. So in part three, I'm gonna show you guys how to heat down or shrink down the back window of a uh, sedan. Uh, in this particular model is my uh, Hype Beast Corolla. Yeah, pretty simple, straightforward, uh, not, nothing to it. Uh, so just the basics, just so that you guys can grasp the concept of heating down a, uh, a back window. Uh, but before we uh, get started, I'm gonna go over all the basic tools that you will need um, to get the job done. Um, some of these tools you will need for sure for certain windows and I'll explain why uh, once we get into it. But uh, yeah, let's get started and uh, I'll go over the uh, tool list. It's one of those weird days today. I'm just, I don't know, I'm just feeling good today. And uh, if you guys are feeling good yourself, smash that subscribe button, you guys. All right, you guys. So this is the uh, basic tool list, course, window tint. Uh, in this particular uh, brand is uh, Lumar, the only one that we trust. Uh, shop towel, of course, stainless steel knife. This is a, uh, um, oh, what the hell is this thing called? Man, I use this tool every day and uh, for like the last 20 years and I still don't remember what it's called. I think it's a slammer, a slammer. But uh, you will need one of these. Of course, the bottom card. Any kind of squeegee, a little bigger would be better, just to cover more space, uh, more area, uh, quicker. Of course, some uh, gloves, wool gloves, or any kind of wrap glove will work. Just not rubber gloves, or um, it just won't slide. Um, bounce sheets, and uh, the most important one is the bulldozer. Back in the days when I started, we didn't have this, and we used to use a uh, uh, clipboard but the clipboard doesn't have that you see that little bit of an angle on the end there right there and you will need that to get back behind the brake lights on the new uh, model vehicles uh, and of course the good old heat gun and some soap solution first we want to start off by uh, prepping the uh, window or the glass surface with some bounce sheet, we're just gonna wet it, soak it, and you're gonna rub it all over the back of the window. This will keep the static away from the, the film off the glass itself. So you just wanna get the residue. And you see the residue starting to dry up and that's what you want it to do. Next you want to do your H pattern. It's basically just getting it wet and doing and splitting the window down the middle here and two lines on the sides. And that's when you get your H pattern. Once you got the film laid down, you just want to go over the area where you laid the H down with the moist cloth or a towel or just to get that pattern. Now it anchors the film down, it's not going to move. We're going to just roughly cut all that excess film off. Just a rough cut. You don't want to, you don't want to go too close to the uh, edge of the border yet. I'll just explain after. So just kind of explain to you, to you guys uh, why the film can only be shrunk end to end and not the, uh, I guess the linear length. Um, the polyester is, uh, when it's manufactured in the factory, um, there's a coating that is, uh, I guess, laminated on. Uh, it's a protective coating to protect the polyester from UV raises. Without that uh, protective coating, the UV would actually just disintegrate the uh, polyester into like a, like a fine powder. It'll turn just all white. So at the uh, factory, uh, the polyester is actually stretched uh, and then so that it could be shrunk um, and like the, I guess unlike the old days where they had because the polyester wouldn't shrink and the way it's manufactured you'd have to seam it and hide the seam lines on the defrost lines and the back windows would be done in multiple pieces but now these days with all the new technology in the film it has come a long ways where now you can actually do a rear window in one piece. Uh, for example, the old, I guess, Corvettes, uh, Volkswagen Beetles, 
unlike uh, traditional films in the back in the days, uh, you can do that. So film has come a long ways. And that's why you have to shrink it up and down and not lengthwise because of the way the polyester is stretched uh, when it's manufactured. There you go. Keep that in mind. All right, guys. So we're going to do that H pattern. All you're doing is just splitting the window film and the tint into an H pattern. Okay. What we're doing is we're forcing the fingers here to go vertical up and down and not horizontal because the film does not shrink horizontal. Uh, they only shrink vertical. And what we're going to look for is basically not letting all the, the fingers go sideways. As you can see here up in the top corner here, this is what we don't want. And what we really want is this. So I'm going to draw out that H pattern here. And we want all the film fingers going up and down and not side to side because it does not shrink because of the way the polyester is made. It does not shrink this way, it shrinks this way. And when we start shrinking, what we're looking for is these fingers are gonna start zigzagging like this. And that's what we're looking for. We're not looking for it when you start overheating them, they're gonna pinch and you don't want it to pinch. That's when you're gonna run into a problem. So again, what we're looking for is the zigzag motion on these fingers here. With a wool glove, um, it actually helps your hand glide and we're using a glove uh, method. All right, so hopefully the camera picks this up. We're gonna let it come up to temperature. We're gonna go on high heat. And the key to it is we're gonna move, we're gonna keep consistent heat moving. There, you see that? There you go, that's what you're looking for. And down, and down. This is exactly what we're looking for here, that zigzag right there, okay? And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna split it into core, to quadrants. We're gonna do this quadrant first, and then we're gonna do this quadrant, and then vice versa, over here, and over here, so into four. So again, we're gonna try again. And then, I guess, well, once you get it here, you can actually swoop, that's it. That's what you're looking for. And then when you heat, we're gonna go back and forth like this. And work our way down. And then back this way. Down. And back this way. Because we tacked it on with the H, you see the fingers don't want to go this way. If you don't tack it here, the fingers will naturally try to go sideways like that and it will not shrink. I'll show you an example of what's going to happen if you don't let it go sideways. Back this way. The key to it is keep the heat moving. If you don't keep the heat moving, you will burn that film. So that's it, you guys. So again, we're gonna work in quadrants, and you're gonna work this way, and back and forth. And slowly take chunks away from it. And not heating to the side. Don't let the fingers go to the sides. Only up and down. That's the key to it. And again, we're gonna do it to this side. We're gonna try to move it all. And see these fingers here? You're gonna move them down. And then see how it's already tacked? So now I'm gonna, I'm gonna go this way. And downwards in, in little chunks. I'll see if I can get a little closer uh, view of uh, what we're heating down. But remember, on these fingers here, what we're looking for is a, 
a little bit of a zigzag like that. Let's see if I can uh, get it on camera here. There. There. Then once it's done, you just and that's it. See, that's the difference with working with a quality film. Uh, you can get a lot of films on eBay and stuff like that, but some of those films might not work out as great. And you will blow through a lot of film. And the only thing is, it might not even be you doing the, uh, you know, it's not even your mistakes. It could be just crappy film. Um, just go to a reputable, I guess, tin shop. They should be able to sell you some good film. Uh, that's another key to it too. Get some good film, you guys, because you don't want to spend all this time heating it down, installing it, and take your time and doing such a fantastic job, and then six months later find out it's turning purple or bubbling everywhere. And trust me, removing film that is bubbling and stuff is the worst, and it could turn into, uh, if you don't know what you're doing, you could end up replacing your, uh, your windshield or your rear windshield because all the defrost will come off. So pay once or pay twice later you guys all right guys so now we finally uh finished shrinking down the uh, back window to take the uh i guess contour of the rear windscreen uh we're gonna want to cut it down to size and before we do that we want to inspect the inside to see how much border we have and what i mean by a border is on newer modern vehicles you will have this black border all the way around on older vehicles like older trucks and stuff you won't have that, it will just be a rubber casket and it's a totally different uh, uh, method of uh, cutting it down to size. So, but before we do that, we want to go and inspect the inside of the vehicle. So inside the Hypebeast Corolla, there's actually a lot of room on the border here. So we don't have to cut very tight on the outside here. So that's uh, lucky for us. So for demonstration purposes, I did use a uh, lighter film just so that we can actually see but if you don't you'll need a light source and a friend to hold the light inside so that you can actually see a lot better but um, let's get back to uh, cutting this film here so when you're cutting because the Corolla has a lot of border we don't have to go as tight but if you don't have a lot of border you want to go I would say a quarter inch right about there uh, hopefully you guys can see that there, right there. Quarter inch on the outside. So that when you put it in, it's going to be behind this border here. Um, depends on the inside of the uh, the, uh, the uh, interior trim. You might need to go a little tighter. But as I told you earlier, the Corolla has a lot of room. So we got lucky on this one. So I'm going to cut that right now. And stainless steel. This is the important stainless steel. If you don't have that, you will etch your glass. So there you go, guys. I cut it around the border all the way around and I maintain that quarter inch all the way around. All right, to uh, prepare ourselves before we throw the back window in, do you want to remove all the headrests? and baby seats or anything that's in the way and uh, don't forget to move the seats forward uh, you'll need as much room as you can to get in there without touching the, uh, the side pillars and anything that can uh, I guess uh, be in your way when we're cleaning you want to spray all the window down from top to bottom and then you give it a good scrub uh, just to see if there's any contaminants you don't want to use razor blades on the back window because you will razor off the defrost lines and they won't work anymore. Um, give it a good scrub all the way around and then you're going to top it off with a uh, squeegee. And again, start from the top and work your way down to the bottom. For modern day cars, um, the third brake light is uh, not, I guess, removable like some of the older uh, models. So that's where the uh, bulldozer auto comes in uh, with that little bit of a lip there on the bottom 
allows us to get behind the uh, brake light and have some pressure against the back window. Um, we used to use a clipboard, but it didn't give that pressure against her. So it was quite hard and had a high tendency to rip the, the film. So uh, let's do that now. We're gonna clean it all and get down there with the bulldozer. All right guys, so the back window is already prepped and ready to, um, I guess, install the film. Uh, because I'm doing, I'm mimicking it, uh, doing it mobile, like mobile installation. I, uh, you need a peeling board, right? So I created myself a peeling board on the side of the, the car. You can use the back window. I don't know, just for me, I'm shorter. It's hard for me to pick up the film from there. It's easier just for me to naturally pick up the film from the side of the window and bring it into the vehicle. Um, the key thing is when you pick it up, you got to make sure the window is upside down. So when you pick it up, it's right side up when you put it into the vehicle. Um, I'll show you right now. So you want to uh, soak the side of the window so it gives it a little bit of a tack. And you pick up the window. So the window is right side up right now. So you want to throw it on the vehicle or your peeling board or whatever you're using upside down there you go so when you pick it up after you peel the cellophane off you pick it up and you throw it in and it'll be right side up all right guys so now that the window is ready and the film is on the side of the vehicle uh, we're gonna soak the window down and get it ready to throw it in um, like any of rule of thumb top down And then down on the sides. And down on the sides. And then you're gonna soak the whole black window. And of course, you'd want to protect all the speakers and stuff if you have any uh, expensive electronics or uh, modern day vehicles, any kind of sensors, you want to uh, protect all those. You're gonna pick it up from the bottom first. Up. Man, hold on. Keep your fingers, keep your hands out. And try not to let it curl on each other. And bounce like that. All right. This will take practice, you guys. So don't worry about it. You can put the film together like this, and it because you have it wet, even if it touches. It's not going to stick to each other. The key to it is getting into the vehicle with, without touching any of the pillars or the uh, upholstery or anything like that. That's the key. So you're going to get inside first and then you're going to practice without touching anything. Just like that. And so if you straight out like this, you can bring it in. Even though it's curling like that, it's not, gonna, it's not uh, I guess, creasing the film or anything like that. So don't be afraid. In first, try not to touch anything. And then you're gonna expand out again.
hopefully the camera can get all the angles, you guys. So once you get it down, you're gonna line up the sides, and then once it's all in, then you just finalize the top. And then you wanna double check to see if there's any uh, air or light coming through. Because if there is, then you wanna readjust it. So once you got that all set and it's ready to uh, squeegee, you wanna re-wet the film just a little bit so there's a little bit of a slip solution. Grab your squeegee and again, split it into the four quadrants. And up, and then down. And then you're gonna do like a bridge flag from the, on the four quadrants out. Then on the bottom ones, you take your bulldozer and you finish. And again, work into the four corners. Once that's done, you wanna finish it off with your Bondo card wrapped in some paper towel just to soak up the edges of the, uh, the window film if there's any water on there. And again, you're gonna repeat yourself, four quadrants, split it up and into the corners. On the bottom corners where it's a little harder to reach, that's where you get the uh, slammer. Again, wrap it in paper towel. Uh, the paper towel basically gives it a little bit of a buffer so that it doesn't scratch the film. So you're almost finished. Um, all you want to do is now is just clean the back window and take off all the uh, bounce uh, or fabric softener residue off the windshield so you can inspect it. And after that, just go around the edges and double check to see if there's any like bubbles or fingers and stuff like that. And then that's pretty much it, you guys. And then it's all done. But I'll give you an example of what you should be looking for. Just uh, as an inspection, you can kind of see right there, there's a little bit of water in the finger. Fingers are little, like triangular shaped um, uh, little air pockets. Uh, what you want to do is just take your bono card and uh, hard card it out. And if they're stubborn, you can just give it a little bit of heat to dry up the water a little bit and it should disappear just like that. And then again, little water pockets or air pockets like that. You want to push them out right now while they're uh, moist and not uh, dry yet. Because once they're dry, air pockets won't disappear. You can see them move. And that's it. All right, guys. So that concludes our uh, DIY window tinting series for beginners. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and found it useful for your guys' own projects and can apply to your guys' own cars. Um, hopefully I made it pretty simple, you guys. Uh, I know I've been doing it for a long time. It does look simple, but if you guys can't do it, you can just go and pay somebody like me and uh, have it professionally installed and have a warranty on it, you guys. But if you're a uh, weekend warrior like myself too, which I like to save money and uh, apply to new car parts, you can do it yourself. Why not? You know what? It doesn't kill. Just try it and uh, have it as a weekend project, you guys, right? So if you guys like it, found it useful, you know what to do, you guys. Smash that subscribe button, turn on the notification, and uh, share with all your friends. And uh, share my channel, you guys. And see you guys in the next week's vlog. Uh, I think maybe we're going to work on some uh, GTR stuff. We'll see. See ya. Like, oh. Thank mm -hmm. you.